What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Harmonium. I'm your host, the Birdman Otis Falcon. A little bit ways back ago, maybe two years ago now, we played a little game called Taverneer on the channel. You guys might recall that if you were around back then. It was a really fun little, like, tavern sim management game with a really cool story. You leveled up different things. You would deck your bar out with different items. And it was a really cool story involved, too, about, like, some sort of magician and, like, life repeating itself. It's really kind of, like... Confusing to explain, but it was a fun little series in case you haven't watched that. Definitely gave it a look-see. It's a really cheap game. It's like $2 now or something. But that game was brought to us by the people who bring us Harmonium here today. And this is the follow-up project to that. And because I really, really enjoyed Tavernier a lot, I figured we'd give Harmonium a try. And just to see what it's all about. I'm planning on doing one video on this here, but if you guys enjoy it, let me know. We can continue it a bit more. Um, to give you a long story short about the story, um, essentially, if you are familiar with Horizon Zero Dawn, or something along the lines of like Skynet with the Terminator. Essentially, the world was devastated because we kind of like relied on machines too much and they eventually went haywire and you know how the rest goes, right? We were playing God and the robots revolted. So we're now living off in some small little village of a small community. We're just trying to prosper and just live our lives because just about the entire rest of the world is overrun with machines. It's got a cool little post-apocalyptic feel to it, but it's honestly like a cheerful slice of life management game. So it's kind of hard to describe, so let's go into a new game in here and we'll get it up and running. A new lease on life. Walking numbs the mind. You've been walking for a very long time. You can barely remember the time before. Images flash through your mind. You remember the sound of gunfire and bombs exploding. Your house torn apart and the ruins of your city. Yep, you're going too fast now. The war that changed everything. You remember scavenging buildings for a while and leaving in search of other humans still alive, hunting, foraging, praying to the stars that some trace of civilization remained on Earth. How long has it been since you ran away? At least a few years. You remember winters and summers, but how many? You have no idea anymore. Walking aimlessly didn't get you very far. Dangerous robots roam the land, and you have to hide at a moment's notice. Food is scarce, and hunting is even harder on an empty stomach. Still, you have to walk. There must be some humans remaining somewhere. You're just gonna take a quick nap. You'll walk tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow's a good compromise. Fall to the ground. You come to your senses, the smell of something being cooked sharpened your mind instantly, and you jump awake. You're inside a wooden building on a bed. You're not sure who saved you, but you are hungry. You look around and find yourself in a small room, without a door but with stairs leading down to a place where the smell comes from. There you find an old man, dressed in extravagant, clo extravagant clothing and steering a pod. He notices you and smiles. Greetings! I am the pod. You must be starving. You were almost dead when I found you, and you've almost slept for a week. Here, take a plate. The bard explains that he was on a trip when he found you and brought you back to his home, the town of Harmonium Point. You take a few bits of your, the warmest food you've seen in years, and it tastes wonderful. Your leg is hurting a lot, and your hoist and set, and your hoist. Oh, your host! <laughs> your host insists you stay at least a week in your bed to recover. He'll provide food and medical supplies for free. Harmonium Point is a city founded on the principles of helping each other and surviving together. Here, there is no money or hierarchy. Everyone cooperates with each other to survive and rebuild what has been lost. But he'll have all the time in the world to tell you more about it later. For now, he insists that you return upstairs and sleep a bit more. The next morning as you wake up, the house is empty. But the bard left a couple of sticky notes. Alright. That's kind of like the introduction. There's a lot of reading involved in this game here. Just a bit of a heads up in case it's not your, not your cup of tea. You spend almost a week drifting in and out of consciousness. One day, as you come back to your senses, you notice that the, bo the bard is home. And he isn't alone. With him is a very familiar face. Hey, a Falcon! Didn't think we'd ever meet again, did you? Sitting nonchalantly in the living room is your childhood friend, Anna said. Memories of both of you playing pranks to each other and running in the streets come back to you as you stare at him. The sparkle of mischief still in his eyes. As you can see, I've survived the cataclysm, and luckily, I found Harmonium Point soon after. The Bard was kind enough to let me in and give me a small jobs. And long story short, I've been here for a few years now. We have some catching up to do, don't we? The bard lets you have your moment, then intervenes. I'll have you know, I am never alone whenever I do my duty. I can count pretty much everyone in this town as a close of friend, and I never hesitate to ask for help when I need it. To keep track of all the people I've met, I use what I call a buddy book. 
a place where I scribbled important things about people, where to find them, and what they're good at, and so on. And I just so happen to have a blank copy. Like a phone book, right? Here we got the buddy book. And this will kind of like, you know, as we progress with the game, we'll be able to unlock different people. And you're going to be doing a bunch of jobs here. Like, you know, chopping down wood, building things, you know, speech craft, etc. And all of the people that will join your cause have different things they excel at. And that's how you build your parties up that way. So as you unlock them, I think as you go through this here, it'll tell you how to unlock all these people as well. But we're really starting off and the only person we know right now is going to be our old friend, Anna said. Job multiplayer plus one. His focus will be constitution, knowledge, and class if I'm right. And his resource production will be 100. Resources will be really important. It'll be like used for a lot of things we build. There's also like technological artifacts and the exotic resources as well. So again, this is definitely a micromanagement game as well, which I'm a big fan of anyway. So it's got a big story and micromanaging involved too. And now we have our first job. Chairs repair wanted. For this one, we're looking for strength, constitution, and agility, and the potential rewards will be resources. So let's collect this one here and hit OK. You and Anderson meet up to talk about the chair's repairs. Well, we're going to need wood, screws, tools. Actually, we're going to need a lot of different things, says Anna said. You know where the bard keeps his supplies, he continues. You do not. I would su- or you do not. I would suggest going to the nearby forest and finding what we need there. But I'm not sure going out in your state is reasonable. Let's see what we can find inside. You both search the house until you find an old and rusty door with supplies sign on it. You try to open it, but it's locked. Sounds like a problem to solve. Every problem has a few different methods to solve it, but the methods that make the most sense are most likely to succeed. Look at this door, it's kind of rusty, so breaking it open could be possible. But it's still made of metal, so it'd be very hard. The lock isn't great, so lock picking it shouldn't be too difficult. Of course, I'm quite sure the key isn't too far. But it's the Bard's house we're talking about, it's a chaotic mess and probably not the best option. So we have been given like a couple of options there alone with what we read, right? Like what the door looks like, and you basically make a choice on that. So we could break the door down. It's wooden, but there's also a bit of metal to it, so probably not the best one. Search for the key, apparently the bard's house is a mess. So how about we try going for picking the lock? And we got only one star, which means that it's not the best option available to us right there alone. Three will give us the most resources, but in this one here we got uh, at least 100 resources and... That brings us up to, oh, we found 100 and 2097. Oh, that's very good. You pick the lock and hear the door open with a metallic click. And it said nods in a serious way. Nice work, my friend. It was the easiest way of doing things, but it wasn't certain you would manage to do it. Even with the correct choices, sometimes you're just unlucky. And some tasks are simply harder than others. Correct choice or not. If you ever fail at something, try to see if it's worth trying a second time, using another option, or waiting a few weeks until you've increased your abilities. Uh, you can keep everything for now. Let's do the actual repairs. You never went to the back of the house, right? The study room is on the left. So now we get to explore the house as well. So you can now have access to the rest of the house. Find and repair the chair and return here afterwards for our rewards. So let's come upstairs to begin with. And we're looking for a chair for repairs. And there's going to be a lot of stuff over here you're seeing that we can't interact with just yet. But um, if you upgrade these things and then fix some and beyond that point, you'll get better rewards down the line. But I guess something we'll cover here pretty soon. For now, we're looking for this chair, which is right over here broken. Click on it here. As you can see, it'll cost us a thousand resources to fix this, which we obviously do have. And it'll give us a 1% bonus chance of success on events. So all the things you fix and upgrade will start stacking up and give you better success at other things down the line, along with your skills and stats and your party members as well. So let's upgrade that one. The chair is now in one piece, and that's very good to see. We got two, as a matter of fact. Chairs and a desk. Let's go back to the front. Okay. During the next week, you wake up one day to find the bard sitting downstairs on one of the new and improved chairs. I can see that you were done fixing the chairs. Good. You might have noticed little sun icons in the bottom right corner of the furniture sheet. Those are used to manage the upkeep level of the house. Upkeep is a way to measure how many pieces of furniture you can keep in shape at the same time. I'm going to skip this because I'll give you guys a better rundown on that pretty soon, so... No problems here. You recovered well this past month. I think it's safe to have a look outside. Come back to the quest board when you're done. I'll give you a tour of the place. I'm sure you're going to love it. So now we have kitchen upgrades unlocked. Upkeep settings unlocked, equipment upgrades unlocked, and garden upgrades and window upgrades as well. If we come upstairs over here, he mentioned the the the, the suns, right, or whatever, on the sheet. 
Well, for instance, right now, if we go to this window and we use a thousand to upgrade it, it will give us a couple more suns. And right now we have five total, which means we could use some of these suns to get a better boost in our different objects out here. So, for instance, if I want to fix these windows right now, I could do that for a thousand. That gives us a better design. And now this gave us up to 15%. Why? Because we fixed the windows, we made them bigger, so now we have more sun coming into the area, so we have more power to power up other things. So for instance, the faucet over here, right? It'll be a thousand to upgrade this, and this requires two upkeep per level. So at the first level, we just need two suns, so if we upgrade this now, we're using up two over 15, but now we're also getting a 5% bonus chance of critical success on events. So again, as we mentioned, everything will kind of be stacking up and giving us better success other things down the line. So we still have a thousand resources. We could go over to the Simple Garden, which is a really good one to have because of food, obviously. Need food. So a thousand resources. Let's go ahead and upgrade that. And this will bring us resources per week. And we're up to 300 now per week, which is very good. It costs two suns to upkeep. So we're using four of the 15 available. That's good. We're down to 838 now. Let's go over to the board and see what is available. A quick lesson in history of war and robots. You and the Bard have talk while touring the city. He explains that Harmonium Point is based on trust and community work. There is no money. Hunters, gatherers, and scavengers share their loot with the rest of the town who provides walls, houses, and other benefits. Everyone is welcome, but if one tried to steal from others or do not do their job, one standing in the town decreases and one ends up expelled. You seem like decent folk, so I'd like to offer you to live here, he continues. I can help you settle. Just tell me what you like, what you're going to need. So here we could ask for something to help us out. So I could use some materials to help me settle correctly. I'm not sure, a bit of everything. Or having people get a good first impression of me seems the most important. Um, honestly, I think resources would be very good. So let's go with um, materials. And we got, ooh, we got a lot of materials there for that one. Not sure what the other ones would give us, but at least um, I think like better standing with the reputation. So maybe reputation would have gone up instead, but I want the materials for better upgrades. The Bard smiles and assures you that he'll do his best. The conversation turns to the creation of the town and what happens in the past years. You don't look that old. I know it's something that help in your everyday life, but do you have any memories from before the Cataclysm? We used to be a mighty society, able to talk to each other across the globe and reach for the stars. Thanks to the biomass-eating robotic monstrosities known as gardeners, Commodities such as water, food, and plastics were churned out automatically. Humanity's comfort was left in the hands of robots. And that's where the entire um, Horizon Zero Dawn thing I mentioned about. And what could possibly go wrong with that, right? He chuckles. Well, as fate would have it, the gardeners ate so much that the Earth started deteriorating. A war broke out between those who wanted to save the Earth and those who wanted to leave it. And find a new home in the stars. We're on Earth, so you can imagine which idea won over the other one. Once the war was over, I didn't have nowhere to go, so I gathered a few friends and created Harmonium Point, a city where we could try to build a life that doesn't destroy the planet. No industrialization, no trading, and of course, no robots trying to eat up everything. And that's how several years later, I became the Bard. The guild I founded is known to gather Harmonium Point's finest troubleshooters. You resume touring the city for the day and have a few more days after. There is certainly something weird yet beautiful in the architecture, a mix of wood and metal, with home gardens and medicinal plants, yet microwaves and freezers. Discover, discovery after discovery, the rest of the week goes by in a blur. Okay, so let's see what we have here today. We're up to 5,000. Um, a note on heirlooms. So this will be like a job, but since we have a couple of extra resources now, we might want to come down to... I don't think we need power just yet, so I'll skip that. I would like to get... Tools will probably help us out with some bonus events down the line. So let's do that one. And we're using two points on that, that's fine. Anything else over here that we could do? You back here? Nope, not yet, probably. Soon, but not yet. It's been more than a month since you arrived in town. You've been mostly doing housekeeping for the house, as the bard has been in and out of town for important matters. But this morning you wake up with a weird feeling. The bard is nowhere to be found, as expected, but this time, he didn't tell you how long he was going to be out for. You start looking for him more and more frantically when you finally notice a small note on the table. Hi there, Falcon. I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible. I made my mind, a few weeks ago, that I had to leave town in a somewhat definitive manner. But since this town cannot be without a bard, I couldn't bring myself to actually do it. That is, until you showed up. You must have guessed that there is going... where this is going by now, right? 
I'm sorry to dump all this on you so suddenly. I had aggravating circumstances. Anyway, let's get to formalities. I hereby name you my rightful heir to the title of Bard of Harmonium Point. May you take the right may you make the right choices when it comes to it and lead this town to harmony. Signed, the former Bard. It's a really um drastic decision to come by, right? Somebody joins the town and suddenly you're making them the Bard. You run the entire shindig now. But of course that's how the game works. Otherwise, we wouldn't have the game if you're not running the entire operation here, right? So now that we have that, we're going to be, I guess, in charge of all the things that happen here. So, a time of accustoming. Let's see what this one is. This might give us a couple of Harmonium Points development. So we want to develop the town further and further out. Right now it's at a 1, and this will be our standing, which is a 3. Bard left the Harmonium Point. There is no way around it. And ever the cryptic man, he chose none other than you to inherit the key to his guildhouse. Still trying to make sense of it, you start asking yourself if all of it was just a dream. But the key in your pocket and a familiar roof above your head confirmed that you're indeed the new expedition leader of Harmonium Point. You're still new to all this, and while you're willing, you have no idea what entails in particular. Neither does anyone you asked about it in the village. Unwilling to let yourself be discouraged by such petty manners, you choose to... Set open the guild and help spread the word. Ponder on what the townspeople need. Jog across town, asking people how you can be of help. So, three choices here. Help spread the word, ponder what the townspeople need, or jog across town and asking people how you can be of help. So, let's um start off at being helpful. That was a terrible choice. <laughs> no stars whatsoever. Try as you might, you can't manage to set any job out of the townspeople. And yet, you feel like there is a need for your services and you fail to find it. So that's a really bad start for us right there. Very bad start. Let's give it another try here. So, how about this time we open the guild and help the word spread? Let's do that one. We got one star this time, and we got the development point. It was only one star, so the other choice would have probably been better, I would say, whichever the other one was. Yours was perhaps not the method the bard would have used, but it is in his absence, your efforts are the best next thing. And it shows. As soon as enough, your expedition board starts filling itself up. You should probably check it. So, we have now jobs from the people knowing that we are now the people in charge. Exploring the guild house. This will cost us 150 resources, but it should give us another development point for Harmonium Points. Let's pop this one open. You're still relatively new to this guild thing, and especially to your new house. It's huge enough that you didn't get to explore all the rooms just yet. So far, you know there's a living room with dozens of bookshelves, a kind of art room, the room where you prepare your expeditions, but you'd be hard-pressed to list every secret tunnels or the likes. Inspecting each and every corner of the house, you unexpectedly spot a book, and one of the house walls stuck as for safekeeping. You've seen that before, you know there's a way to dislodge it, if only you could remember. Try to peer into the book's crevice to spot any mechanisms to operate. Kid batch some kind of book extra <laughs> extraction device. Okay. So, let's go here, over here and do... Maybe there's a, a mechanism to operate? Okay. One star, but it was a good one because we got our development point. You managed to get to the book. It relates to the history of the Cataclysm with odd poetry, befitting of the Bard. You spend the afternoon reading about how Tim Grant, Emperor of the Empire of Humanity, fought with his brother Carl Grant, leader of the United Nations, to the bitter end. Tim was apparently exiled to a place beyond the horizon as to atone for his sins. You're surprised to find the following pages scribbled over. Nevertheless, the book manages to make a fantastic gift to the town's library. Alright, so we have now given some more culture and history to the town. And here we got a couple of these here. Um, Let's see about perhaps going to the resources and investing a bit more in that. 4,000. That brings us to 600. That's good. And we have the... Yeah, we have the suns for it. Perfect. So it is now using up five, but now we'll be getting 600 resources per week. So I think it's definitely a good investment to get that up and running as soon as possible. And we're not really using the resources for anything else right now, so that's fine. Oh! And we also got a bunch of other furniture unlocked, too. So you know what? That's what that unlocked. So does that mean now I could come over here and... Yep. Simple workshop. Two new expeditions enabled when built. Ooh. Thousand resources. We got that. So we could do that one, which I guess we probably... We have the unused space, we have the unsorted loot. And... oh. The library. Potted plants. 
we could have more people in our roster, which would not be a bad thing because, again, the more people we have, we could kind of spread the requirements for missions down the line. So I'm thinking that's good, but I like the idea of more expeditions, so there you go. So now that we have a thousand resources, let's go off and see about an expedition here, which is going to be a trip to the city. Explore Ruin City for tech parts. There are many upgrades you could use for the house, but most of them require electronic parts that nobody can manufacture in Harmonium Point. Precise equipment such as electronic devices can be found in ruined cities, and this is why you're going to lead the expedition there. But technological artifacts are still difficult to find, and shadows of the Cataclysm are still around, are still found in the dark corners of the planet, such as this one. It will take a clear strategy to proceed efficiently. So we can focus on the buildings you know to be the most likely to have what you need, Avoid danger by looking very intimidating, buying yourself more time to explore. Visit as many buildings as possible, grab everything and sort it later. I think that's probably the best one right there, right? You manage to bring back many different artifacts that will certainly ease the life of everyone in the village. After splitting the items with the others, you are left with the few things that can be used for yourself. So we got two of those little um tech things, which I believe we notice are needed for... I think it was the garden, am I right? Yes. So we need 9,000 and one of these bad boys here. But this is kind of the gist of um, Harmonium Point. As I mentioned, it's a very story-oriented game, and you gotta kind of do resource micromanaging when it comes to that, making the right choices. But if you guys want to see a bit more, do let me know. All the information for this game will be down below. I believe it's like $4 or something. So if you're into like adventure games like this with micromanaging, you might enjoy it. I will catch you next time.